Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on hydrophone sensitivity and frequency response. We'll begin by defining what we mean by hydrophone sensitivity. This is simply the hydrophone's output voltage divided by the average pressure at the hydrophone active element. In underwater acoustics, it's common to use logarithmic units, in which case decibels relative to one volt per micropascal are commonly used. In ultrasonics, Linear units are more commonly used, in which case we consider millivolts per megapascal or nanovolts per pascal appropriate for representing sensitivity. Generally speaking, sensitivity is proportional to sensor area. When a hydrophone is too sensitive relative to the field being measured, saturation can occur. This can clearly be seen from the clipping on the peak negative excursion of the waveform shown on the left hand side. Similarly, when we have insufficient sensitivity, we can have a noise limited measurement. And in this case, noise is masking the underpinning acoustic signal. We'll now go on to consider frequency response. This is the variation of sensitivity as a function of frequency. In underwater acoustics, where hydrophones are typically small relative to the wavelength being measured, we find that frequency response can be largely constant, certainly in regions where we are below thickness or radial resonances. In the case of the hydrophone shown on the left hand side, below 30 kHz we have a pretty constant sensitivity. In contrast, in ultrasonics, where hydrophones are typically larger than the wavelength being measured, we can find very much more variation in the frequency response. We'll go on to consider this in a little more detail. Let's first look at needle hydrophones. Whilst these sensors are generally small, they can still be large relative to wavelength. So if we look at the frequency response we considered earlier, we have a region below 15 MHz where there is a lot of variation in sensitivity. This arises from diffractive resonance behaviour. As is also common with many needle hydrophones, there's a plateau region in the middle of the frequency response, in this case from about 15 to 32 megahertz. And then beyond that, we see a high frequency roll off. This again is common with needle hydrophones. Fibre optic hydrophones, like needles, also have diffractive resonance behaviour. But because they're very much smaller, these diffractive effects don't tend to appear until much higher in frequency. In the case of this hydrophone, we're starting to see those effects from about 19, 20 megahertz up to 40 megahertz. Below about 10 megahertz for the fiber optic hydrophone, the response is pretty linear. Finally, we consider membrane hydrophones. Because these are much larger devices, they don't have the same diffractive resonances that one sees with probe or fiber optic hydrophones. In this case, their only feature in their frequency response is their thickness resonance. For the case of this hydrophone, we see that at about 65 to 70 megahertz. Below that, we have a very smoothly varying response, and at very low frequencies, below 30 megahertz, there's very little variation as a function of frequency. It's also important to consider some of the sort of waveforms that we may be looking at. We'll now consider a therapeutic waveform. This is typical of a narrowband waveform. Here we can see we have many cycles all at the same sort of frequency. In fact, the frequency spectrum for this waveform is a very narrow, almost delta function at the frequency of interest. We'll contrast this with a very broadband signal. This is typical of what might, one might see for diagnostic ultrasound, but you can often see other applications in non-destructive testing and lithotripsy where there are similarly short pulses. In this case, because of the high pressure levels, we also have nonlinear acoustic propagation, and this has led to harmonic generation. So we have a very broadband spectrum. Although the peak is about 6 MHz, there is significant spectral content at 20, 30, and even 40 MHz. It's important to make sure that we choose the correct hydrophone for these different applications. Let's begin by considering the spectrum of the therapeutic signal with the hydrophone sensitivity for the needle hydrophone. So although we have some variation 
of the hydrophone's frequency response within the very narrow band within, within which the significant energy for the therapeutic signal is actually very small variation. This would be an appropriate choice of hydrophone for this application. However, if we now looked at our diagnostic signal with its much broader spectrum, one can see that there's a lot of variation in the sensitivity over that range. And the only way to correctly compensate for the frequency dependent sensitivity variations were to be used to use deconvolution to look at this signal. We'll consider that in a further tutorial. We'll now consider a membrane hydrophone, and we'll start with that difficult case of the diagnostic hydrophone signal. One can see that even though there's quite a lot of variation in the source signal being measured, there's very little variation in the hydrophone sensitivity. And if anything, where the acoustic signal has spectral contact diminishing, there's an increasing sensitivity with the membrane hydrophone. Membrane hydrophones are an ideal choice for measuring broadband diagnostic signals. We'll now consider the therapeutic signal. This has got a very narrow spectral range. So again, one would consider that the hydrophone may be appropriate for this measurement. However, the long signals associated with therapy signals can sometimes drive membrane hydrophones into resonance. So whilst frequency response is important, it's not the only consideration. So to summarize, the frequency response of a hydrophone should be compatible with the signals it's used to measure. But although sensitivity and frequency response considerations are important, they're not the only considerations. We hope you found this interesting. If you did, come back and find some more of the Precision Acoustics tutorial videos.